we got some generational trauma, generational curses. <laughs> this episode is super fun. Uh, I continue to absolutely adore this show. Um, is this show going to make it into my top five? There's a high chance that it will, funnily enough. I feel as though it's going to be a fantastic um, additional piece to that of WandaVision, where you can go into WandaVision, watch that, and then instantaneously pick up into Agatha, and then enjoy that as well for completely different reasons. But at the end of the last episode, we lost Mrs. Hart. Rest in peace, Kitty. She did not make it. And we need a new Green Witch. The decision was to essentially summon a green witch to the road casting a spell i do love how diverse all of the magic is in this show because for the most part if you've only ever watched the mcu you would think that everyone casts magic like dr strange unless you're unless you're wanda where she doesn't really need to do the the the, the sigils to summon the circles or anything along those lines she could just do whatever she wants to do by thinking about it this show has done a really good job of showing just how different and diverse magic actually is. Where Agatha's purple is more along the lines of absorption and reflection, where when you attack her with magic, she absorbs it into her being, and that makes her more and more strong. Funny enough, she's practically the magical version of Sebastian Shaw from the X-Men First Class film where he can absorb kinetic energy and then release that kinetic energy in order to hurt an opponent. Agatha is almost on the exact same wavelength where she can absorb magical energy and then she, that magical energy she absorbs allows her to fuel her own magic and her own spells. Uh, then you get down to, uh, what is her name? Jennifer, Kale. She's the potions witch which means that she can brew things up and then she's stirring and then you can see the 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 water take on a completely different hue that instantly takes me back to potions class with snape and slughorn uh, in harry potter and then in this episode you get the summoning of a green witch an earth witch where you draw the outline of the witch in the leaves on the ground and then every witch gives a memento saying or sacrifices a memento saying what exactly it is that they're willing to sacrifice in order to gain from that witch like oh i want her to be kind i want her to know what she's doing i don't want her to be crazy in any way shape or form now here's the interesting thing pay attention to where exactly uh rio got summoned from because the idea is that the green witch was supposed to be summoned basically in the outline that is on the ground where they sacrificed it rio did not come from the outline she came from uh mrs hart's corpse like she dug her way out of a grave i don't know whether or not that's saying what exactly it is that she is i know what the funko pop leaks say but I really take everything I see online with a grain of salt because it's really easy to fake things in today's age. However, we are very much leaning into the fact that Rio may not be everything that she seems. And I'm gonna make a video separately about that that's gonna be a little bit more spoilery down the line. But getting into the idea of generational curses, generational trauma, I really, really like that every episode deals with a witch in her own element. Like the idea that music can be used as a form of a protection spell was really, really dope, and I did not expect that at all. The idea that you yourself don't have to constantly sing the song as long as there's someone out there in the world playing that song at some point in time or humming that song at some point in time or thinking about that song at some point in time it casts a protective barrier around that person in particular so that you yourself or the witch who casts it doesn't have to be alive in order to keep up that protection that protection is just something that is constantly going it in all honesty reminds me of the love charm that harry's mom places on harry when he was born and protects him from voldemort 
in particular, where if Voldemort attempts to touch him, it instantaneously burns him. It's kind of the exact same thing with the generational curse demon, where the generational curse demon cannot curse Alice because her mother created a a a protection charm in the form of a song, and that made it so popular that there are people around the world who are constantly listening to it, constantly playing it, and as a direct result, constantly keeping up the protection from the demon. And it was only when they left the Earth plane of reality and transferred over to the road plane of reality that the demon was no longer being kept at bay because of the song, because the song could not in any correlation be played there. And then it's also the fact that Alice had to work through the trauma of essentially losing her mother and the fact that all of them have the exact same scars, which is super dope that the scar itself are the talons from the demon landing on their shoulder and then setting them on fire and then burning down the environment that they're in. Because now it calls back to when she says that earlier in the episode, she says that her mother died in, what was it last episode? That her mother died in a fire. I think it was this episode that her mother died in a fire. You know that basically the demon finally caught up with her mother and killed her mother and destroyed the entire area that they were uh, essentially in. Now, of course, teen gets hurt. Did he allow himself to get hurt? I don't think so. I think he really got he got injured because he just wasn't paying attention or he's playing into the whole I have no idea what's going on. I'm, I'm a completely innocent bystander in all of this type angle. But we see another side of Agatha where she breaks down like we've never seen her her caring. She's very much aloof. Like when Mrs. Hart dies, she's like, who? And like she keeps it moving. But when teen gets hurt, she's crying like she's almost distraught that she might lose him because in some way shape or form she has either worked it into her own head that this might be her son or she's projecting the loss of her son onto teen because he's basically become a little bit too involved with her or you could say that there's something else going on on the magical side since he technically helped break her out of her her shell that she was essentially trapped in. But she cares for him. She might not ever say it out loud because of the way in which she carries herself that she has to be the witch who doesn't care, the witch who's aloof, the witch who might betray you at any point in time. She has a reputation to essentially uphold, but she does care for his character. The fact that she was willing to sit by his bedside until he essentially woke up, the fact that she was distraught and she was crying and she was essentially telling uh, Jennifer to do whatever the fuck it takes to basically heal him, shows that Agatha is capable of caring and that teen, AKA Wiccan, because I think that's exactly who he is, might be the one that ends up helping Agatha to maybe turn a little bit of a new leaf, but we're, we're essentially going, going to see. And then of course we get a little bit more of the past between both Agatha and Rio, where something happened in the past, where Rio is basically the one to essentially tell her that that is not your son. I'm going to talk about that in a different video because I really, really feel as though um, she basically told on herself as to what exactly happened in the past that basically led to all of this. They're falling out, uh, the fact that she's just out to attempt to kill her, everything. But that's going to be another video. Let me know what you guys think about uh, Agatha. Agatha episode four. Is that episode four? Good God. Are we four? Are we four? Are we four episodes in already? Hold on now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's no way time has been flying by that fast, right? Has time been flying by that fast? Jesus. We are definitely on episode four, which in and of itself is crazy. We're about halfway through since it's a total of, I believe, nine episodes that we're going to be getting um this season but yeah let me know what you guys think about agatha along episode four and i'll catch you in the next one all right peace